Hello, my name is Ronald Kim. This video, the third in the series on the morphology of classical Armenian, is called Verbal Morphology Part 1. We will provide an overview of the categories of the classical Armenian verb. Here is the roadmap for this video. We will begin with a typological overview and the relevant categories of the classical Armenian verb. We will look at the two-stem system of verbal inflection, then examine the interaction of the categories of tense and aspect, and of aspect and mood. We will conclude by looking at the different ways in which voice is expressed in the classical Armenian verb. Classical Armenian shows typical fusional morphology in its verb, typical for an older Indo-European language. Agreement is expressed by endings, as in other older Indo-European languages. Agreement is expressed for person, number, tense, aspect, and to a limited degree, mood and voice, as we will see. Most finite forms are analyzable synchronically as stem plus thematic vowel plus ending. And traditionally, and in most grammars today, different conjugations are defined based on the thematic vowel, which as we will see can be either e, e, a, u, or in one case, o. So all the different vowels. Stems are formed from roots by suffixation in almost all cases. For example, we have the suffix on in the present stem tesane. Compare aorist tes, e or tes a, without the suffix on. Conversely, we have the aorist sirets, alternating with siriats, and that shows a very important aorist forming suffix. Compare the present sir without that suffix. The only prefix in classical Armenian verbal morphology is phonologically conditioned. This is the so-called augment e. Monosyllabic aorist forms, which happen to be always active, and begin in a consonant, take the augment e. Let's look at a couple of examples here. We have in the aorist first singular, tesi, I saw, but third singular, e des, he or she saw. Tes is one syllable and begins in a consonant, so it takes the prefix e. Similarly, first singular, ketsi, I lived, but third singular, e kiats. Recall that ea spells a diphthong. So here, too, the aorist stem is a single syllable, kiats, and begins in a consonant. But in contrast, we have first singular genatsi, I went, third singular genats, with no augment. Why? Because the stem consists of two syllables with an unwritten schwa vowel. Vowel initial forms do not take the augment in the classical language. They do beginning in post-classical texts. So we have, for example, ats, wed, and beginning in later times, we have aats. That's a post-classical form, although you will find it in some texts that we call classical Armenian. There are, from a diachronic point of view, exceptional aorists, uh, edi, put, etu, gave, ele, became. But the augment in these aorists has been lexicalized. It has been analyzed as simply part of the aorist stem. In synchronic terms in classical Armenian, these aorist stems are simply ed, et, and el. The verb inflects according to the following categories. We have person, first, second, and third, number, singular, and plural, there being no traces of the Proto-Indo-European dual in classical Armenian verbal inflection. Non-past, meaning present, but could also be future, versus past. Two different aspects, imperfective, traditionally called present, and perfective, traditionally called aorist. Moods, indicative, subjunctive, and imperative. And finally, two voices, active and medio-passive. These are the relevant categories of verbal inflection. Verbal morphology is characterized by a two-stem system. What does that mean? It means that all fully inflecting verbs have two stems, traditionally called present and aorist. These are the principal parts from which all finite and non-finite verbal forms are built. 
So once you know these two stems, you can form all of the relevant forms of a classical Armenian verb according to the following table. From the present stem are formed the present indicative, the imperfect, the present subjunctive, the prohibitive or negative imperative, we'll return to that, the infinitive, and for some verbs, the participle. The participle, however, is usually formed to the aorist stem, along with the aorist indicative itself, naturally, the aorist subjunctive, and the positive imperative. So this is the distribution of forms built to the present and the aorist stems. Let's look now at the interaction of different categories, beginning with tense and aspect. The aspectual value of these two stems, present or imperfective and aorist or perfective, is clear in the indicative past, where the imperfect contrasts clearly with the aorist. Imperfect aser means was saying, said repeatedly, said over a period of time, kept saying. Aorist asats, in contrast, means said once. So there, it's clear that aspect is the defining factor. However, only the present stem forms an indicative non-past, that is the present itself. And this is shared with other Indo-European languages that have an aspect distinction. Only the present stem can form an indicative non-past, the present. The aorist stem does not. It forms only a past. Let's now look at the interaction of aspect and mood. The aspectual value of the present and aorist subjunctive is not obvious. In the Armenian Bible, both categories translate Greek aorist subjunctives, and both categories also translate Greek present subjunctives. So it is not entirely clear what their synchronic value was, how they contrasted in synchronic terms. Morphologically, it's clear the present subjunctive is formed to the present stem, and the aorist subjunctive to the aorist stem. But what their actual semantic differentiation was continues to be the topic of research and debate. In main clauses, the aorist subjunctive, overwhelmingly the aorist subjunctive, functions as a future and translates the Greek future in the Armenian Bible. And in the Armenian grammatical tradition, it was treated as a future. So this value was taken to be primary. So recall that in main clauses, the future is usually expressed with the aorist subjunctive. Finally, let's look at the interaction of aspect and mood for the imperative. The imperative does not contrast for aspect. There is no contrast between, let's say, do and keep doing or do habitually. But there are two stems and they are in complementary distribution. The positive imperfect is formed to the aorist stem while the negative imperative or prohibitive is formed to the present stem. So there is a complementary distribution there with respect to stem morphology. Let's now turn to the expression of voice. As already mentioned, classical Armenian contrasts active and medial passive voice, as many other older Indo-European languages or still modern Greek. But the morphological marking is curiously inconsistent. Let's begin with the aorist. In the aorist, active and medial passive are marked by different stem vowels and partly different endings. Here are a couple of examples. We have aorist, indicative, active, second singular, berer, you brought, third singular, eber, with that nice augment, e. Eh. But aorist, indicative, medial passive, second singular, berar, with the stem vowel a, ah, you were brought, and third singular berau, with the same stem vowel a ah, and a special ending w, he, she, it was brought. So there, the expression of voice is particularly clear. You have different stem vowels and partly different endings. Not so in the other categories. In the present, the active and medial passive have identical endings. And for verbs that have the stem vowel e, e, you have a nice distinction by stem vowel, but not ending. So you have, for example, sirem, I love, but sirim, I am loved. Notice that the endings are the same, only this stem vowel differs. 
For verbs ending in a or u, verbs whose stems end in a or u, there is no such contrast. So there is this very imbalanced system of expression of voice. Luanam means I wash and I am washed. You need to figure it out from context. Arnu means I take or I am taken. For these verbs, there is no overt expression of the voice contrast. Finally, to top it all off, in the imperfect, active and medial passive are not distinguished for any verbs in classical Armenian. Only beginning in post-classical texts do you begin to see specially marked medial passive forms in the imperfect. So yes, classical Armenian does have voice distinctions, but they are not always expressed, and they are expressed in inconsistent ways uh, for aorist versus perfect, and even for different kinds of perfects, for different perfect stems. So it's a very imbalanced system. How this came about continues to be discussed. As in other Indo-European languages with voice distinctions, Armenian has many deponent or medium tantum verbs. The term deponent comes from Latin grammar and refers to verbs which occur only in middle or medial passive forms and have no corresponding active. For example, we have erken chim, I fear. You'll notice that the stem vowel is e. There is no erken chem. Aorist erkiai, also with a distinctively middle ending. Darnam, I turn, intransitive. I turn around, for example. Aorist darzai. Unim, I have. Aorist to a suppletive stem, kalai. And perhaps most interestingly, tsnanim, which has a medial passive appearance. It has the stem vowel e, but it means both I bear or give birth and I am born. That's very peculiar. And the aorist is tsnai. Some verbs even have mixed voice morphology in the present and aorist. For example, the verb chanachem, well, that has a stem ending in e, so it looks active. But the aorist is tsanyai, with a medial passive stem. So that's a mixed voice morphology verb. This concludes our first video on the verbal morphology of classical Armenian. In the next video, we will discuss the actual expressions of inflection.